What's going on everybody, Jason here, and today we're doing another JDM car of the month. I know it's been a few months since I've done one, but we got a really special car today, so stay tuned. All right guys, so today we're gonna be checking out this 1995 Toyota Celica GT4, this is the ST205, and Reggie here, he's the proud owner. So we're gonna do a little walk around, and we're gonna check out the exterior. He's gonna give us a rundown on the plans for the car, where he got it, and uh, we'll take a look at the inside and maybe go for a drive, does that work? Yeah, sure, of course. All right Reggie, so when'd you get the car? I got it last year around October. Okay. I had already scouted these cars like before I even got to the island. So I found a middleman and I got it through this company called MMF Auto Works. Yeah, I know Mike from MMF. I'll, I'll plug his info down below. I know a lot of you guys are asking me, you know, where where you can get these cars and where you can get them shipped to and all that. And I believe he does export. I'm not 100% sure, but if you are going to get stationed in Okinawa and you're looking to get a car, he's definitely a good option. I mean, as far as plans, plan to keep it as stock as possible. I like the stock look. Yeah, I completely agree. But I'm also planning to bring this to the States and I'm in the process of researching what I can and cannot mod. But as far as mods goes, I've already put coilovers on it because these cars are honestly notorious with the super strut, and but which is a lot of ball joints linked together. Pretty, is it uncomfortable to drive or is it's, it just a pain in the butt? I don't know a whole lot about the super strut. All right, so when I first got the car, it already made the uh, infamous clunk noise. Uh -huh. So I had, I already changed the entire super strut in the front. I all new links, all new control arms, ball joints, and I went. I decided to go with coilovers just because if I was just gonna drop all that money, why not? Yeah, might as well. Yeah, it definitely looks good. The ride height is nice on it. Very clean, and I'm, I'm really digging the OZ wheels. You said you got these pretty recently too. You oh, upgraded yeah, these. I did. What are the specs on these bad boys? Those are five by one hundred, unfortunately. <laughs> but they are 17 inch and they are 8 inch wide with a 35 offset. Nice. Yeah, and I do like the raised lug nuts on there. I need to get some for mine. Been meaning to do that. But yeah, I love the paint. I'm kind of a sucker for red cars now. It's been resprayed though. Oh, it has been? What was yeah, the original it's color? No, no, it's Is originally red and it's been resprayed. So I noticed little things like this. Uh, it's peeling over here and you can tell that they were they sanded it through the. Uh, the trimming. Hey, my Evo's been resprayed. You know, nothing wrong with it. <laughs> it definitely looks good though. Clear coat's nice on it. Definitely stands out. So the spoiler, I noticed right off the bat, this definitely looks like a Toyota Supra spoiler. It's definitely a uh, Toyota Supra TRD spoiler, but it fits this body perfectly. So hey, I, I feel like this car, honestly, is like a mini Supra. When you kind of look at it, you know, it's kind of got the fat butt. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I definitely like this more than the uh, the stock one that's on there that has that like little two piece right here, that little riser. This definitely has a very nice look to it. Very aggressive, and yeah. yeah, I really do like these. Another thing that I got was uh, well, no, I didn't get. It came with the car, but it came with an Apexi bomber exhaust. So I was pretty hyped about that. Very clean, man. Any other modifications done to the car? Uh, no, not really. Just I guess a radio. <laughs> but I did put a Brady boost gauge. Okay. And it's a, uh, a multi dial gauge. Okay, nice. Oh, yeah, I do like these. I saw these at Tokyo Auto Salon. Yeah, and the Kenwood head unit definitely adds about 20 horsepower. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> So other than the coilovers, do you have any other plans? You said you want to keep it pretty much stock. Do you have any right. performance mods? I know a lot of guys like to do, you know, right. so some intakes, maybe downpipe. These cars came with a charge cooler. Yeah, yeah, let's pop the hood. Let's check it out. So I know these have the three SGTEs, right? Same engine that they put in the SW20 oh, yeah. MR2. So I, I don't know what Toyota was thinking. Honestly, I feel like the charge cooler should have been inside the uh, SW20 simply because the engine's in the back. And a front mount would have been a better choice. So the SW20 doesn't have the charge cooler, only the GT4? Right. Okay. I mean, I like the charge cooler, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, it's just more parts to fail. That's true. So, the, my plan is in the future to go with a front mount and actually use an Evo intercooler. Oh, okay, I see. I see right here. So, this is the intercooler. Right. So, you have the coolant lines running through the intercooler right, right into the tar Okay, very yeah. cool. So it's a, it's a water-cooled intercooler. Pretty, yeah, pretty much. You got all the... <laughs> that's it right there. That's where the coolant goes. Okay. It travels all the way here to the charge cooler. Interesting. But yes. you're thinking maybe down the road, clean up the engine bay a little bit, get a nice big front mount? Yes. The plan is to go with a front mount, and when I get her back to the States, send it to some kind of SW20 specialist <laughs> that specializes on 3SGTEs, and have them forge it for me. Oh, nice. 
You got some big plans for it. What's the horsepower on these? Two, 255. 255? Right. Uh, so it's yeah. kind of right around the RX-7 yeah. horsepower for the for the mid-90s. It didn't do that yeah. whole 276 gentleman's no. agreement, but no. still good power output on an all-wheel drive car with a four-cylinder. You can't beat it. No, it's, uh, it's peppy for what it is. It's really fun. I mean, it's all-wheel drive, so there's that. It's also quite front heavy though, and when I drive it feels very front heavy. You can feel it? Yeah, I see we got the BC coilovers looking fresh. And the engine bay is super clean on this though. I'm really impressed. Yeah, I wiped it down for a whole hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, the car's gonna be on YouTube. <laughs> Gotta clean it up. Yeah, it looks good though. It looks really good. Very nice. Even your heat shield here. Is in pretty good condition. Usually, that's the first thing to go on these cars, right? right first thing to deteriorate. All the water, you know how it is with the Evo, also the mm -hmm. vents and stuff. Oh the yeah, trust all me. All over here. But yeah, this is actually in pretty good condition. Yep, it's uh, not too rusted out. You want to go ahead and fire it up? We'll get a little exhaust tone. Of course, we're back down here at the Chatton Harbor. Figure, why not check out some JDM Legends and have a nice view too at the same time. I know my last cars for sale video. I spotted a Celica GT4 over at Dream Run, the black one, and that one. I thought it was in great condition, but after seeing this one, I think this is the nicest Celica GT4 I've seen on Okinawa. There's some that are a little beat. I've seen a few that are, oh, yeah. you know, that have seen some better days. Oh yeah, she purrs. Does it? We get a little exhaust tap. Sure, you know, you don't have to. You don't have to try to two-step it or anything. Oh, you want to know the funny thing about these cars? They put factory anti-lag in these. Really? So if you're looking for a GT4, you want to get a 1994 WRC edition because now you can say you have factory anti-lag. You don't have to sit there and mess with like ECU tuning or anything. Oh, wow, that's a good uh, good fun fact on these cars. I didn't know that. Oh, it also came with, came with like intercooler spray, like you know mess spray. Oh, very cool. Yeah. A lot of technology in these cars back in the day. Ooh. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds real good. Yeah. Doesn't sound like a four banger. Very cool, man. You gonna do anything else to the exterior? So I wanted to get matching TRD like side scoots, the spats for them, just to like complement, you know, the whole TRD thing. Of course. But I'm honestly digging just the factory look. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I know in today's tuning world, the style is changing. Cause you know, back in the 90s it was like, Go big, go home, right. fast and furious, big body kits, crazy colors, crazy livery. Nowadays, we're kind of going back into that whole clean look. Right. You know, body kits are kind of a thing of the past. You know, a lot of people are just doing diffusers, maybe front lifts here and there, getting some nice wheels, but. I mean, uh, I mean, if it's from the factory and it's a factory option, I dig it. For sure, 100%. <laughs> well, you want to go for a ride? It's really nice inside. It's definitely like a mini Supra. Check this out. Yep. So it's got this little angle right here towards the driver, kind of like that cockpit feel. Right. Very clean. I like the simplicity of it. You know, shifter, climate control, radio, gauges, everything you need right here facing the driver. And part of why I scouted GT4 simply because we didn't get them in the States. And I'm like, man, the Celica, honestly, I like the, the body and the look of the Celicas, but they just didn't have any balls to them, you know? Yeah. But these, mm -hmm. these somewhat do. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know there's a lot of upset people back in the States that we never got this car. Me being one of them, but hey, I live in Japan now, so it's not too big of a deal. Where should we go? But I'm trying to figure out, I mentioned in a few videos in the past, since my Evo is a 96, I don't know if I want to wait a year and put it in storage to ship it back to the States because I leave here in 2020. So I might be putting it up for sale. Who knows? But I, I'm kind of keeping my eyes out right now. And this is definitely one of the cars I've been checking out on Gunet on some of the auction sites. So I'm pretty glad I get to go for a ride in this and actually kind of see how it feels and how it sounds. So you said the car is bumpy. Yeah. You haven't been in the Evo yet. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Is that the factory recirculating valve? A little chirp? Yes. Um, all time all wheel it's drive. all time all wheel drive yeah, unlike so. the uh, the GTRs and the yeah. Evos. Oh, okay. 
All right. So it's, uh, yeah. It's and, peppy. Yeah. I think it's peppy. <laughs> you definitely feel all those 250 horsepower. And how many miles do you have right now? I have 111,000 kilometers. So today. 60, Wait, 70. Yeah, about almost 70,000. Almost 70,000 miles? Yeah. So super low miles for a 95. I mean, the engine is definitely healthy. Yeah. You, can, you can feel it. I'm impressed. Yeah. But this, this feels very planted for what it is. Mm -hmm. And the, so the good thing about the 3S GTEs is that full boost is like 2500 RPM. Don't quote me on that. Oh, wow. It's very, but it's low. It's really low. It yeah. spools very quickly. From the factory, though, these cars have a bit of a boost cut in first and second gear. So there's there's that too. Is there a way around it to alleviate that? Uh, or is that just still, like an easy? Still learning this yeah. car. <laughs> yeah. It, it is so quiet at idle it sitting is. here right now. So you hear that humming noise? Uh-huh. That's the charge cooler. Oh okay. And so it's just it's got a pump on it? Yeah, now it stops, see? But the moment I give it gas, you hear it again. Ah. Interesting. It almost feels like one of those hybrid cars that when you come <laughs> to a stop the engine cuts. Yeah. That's not a bad thing though. I'm getting kinda old getting older and part of me you know kind of likes a little bit of quiet every now and then yeah, third gear feels pretty good yeah it's uh i mean that's when i actually get to use the boost but in first and second it's you gotta find out Dota and the reason why the sc205 doesn't have that many championship belts on it is because toyota team europe was caught uh, cheating. So what it is is the 350 horsepower was max that they could have, uh -huh. but no one could replicate the SC205s um, zero to 60 times. And then the big wigs with WRC was like, you know what, we're gonna go and inspect this car. So they found a uh, a bypass plate on the turbo the, uh, to basically give it more boost. So. So they were over the 350? They, they were definitely over 350. <laughs> so nobody could keep up with it and they're like, Basically. Let's throw it on a diner real quick. And, all right. Yeah, so uh, Toyota ended up getting banned from WRC. Sneaky, sneaky Toyota. <laughs> yeah. Sorry I couldn't keep up with, you know, the TM team back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's okay though. It's uh, They have plenty of belts from the uh, previous GT4, the uh, ST185, mm -hmm. through uh, this man named Carlos Sainz. But... That's sad. This one didn't really get to, you know, participate in much. I really wish they would bring the Celica back. The last model of the Celica, the, what was it, the GTS? The one that yeah. had the 2ZZ FE in it? Yeah. With the VVTi. Not a bad engine, you know. The looks, I guess for the early 2000s, it looked all right. But it was more of a chick car and Sorry if I'm offending anybody that's ever owned one of those back in the day. <laughs> you know, ever since I got this car and I started watching more videos on Celicas and whatnot, I learned that the proper pronunciation of the car is not Celica, it's Celica. Oh, Celica? Yeah. Oh. Oh, I've been, I've been lied to my entire life. <laughs> I think so I'm start calling it a Celica now. Yeah, it's, it's called a, yeah, a Celica <laughs> GT4, so I am just like, oh, so I've been, uh, I must sound like an idiot when I'm talking to a Japanese guy. Yeah, right? <laughs> huh. Oh, there's some uh, clean FC and uh, FD right there. Yeah. The bottom. Yeah, beautiful day here in Okinawa right now. It's probably like, what, low 60s? Sunny, hardly any clouds out. It's a perfect day to be cruising around. Oh, yeah, she pulls pretty good. So we're heading back to the harbor right now, and I've probably spent what 20 30 minutes yeah I will say for those ever considering buying one of these uh, it's definitely a really planted ride I didn't get any seat time in the driver's seat I'm not trying to drive everybody's car he <laughs> Reggie did offer but as a passenger I can definitely feel the turbos working and uh, the interior is nice there's a lot of room in the back seats even so if you got kids oh, here's a, a nice s14 Right behind the Evo. Yeah. Old girl right there. Give me some space. Before I forget, can we check out the trunk space on it? I know it's a hatch. Yeah. You know, I'm doing an in-depth review. We've got to check all aspects of this car. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's got like 
golfer everywhere. You could definitely get your golf clubs in here. Yeah, it'll fit. It'll fit. I like that. It's rear strut bar. Yep. Oh, the leather pad on it. Uh, factory. What? <laughs> yep. A little yeah. dirty. It's pretty sweet. Definitely probably the nicest ST205 example on Okinawa. So I really appreciate you letting me take the time and review your car. Taking me for a ride, I would definitely love to own one of these one day. Because I feel like once you go all wheel drive, it's kind of hard to go back. Like I could go back to a rear wheel drive car, never again a front wheel drive. Yeah. Um, no offense to those front wheel drive cars, but all wheel drive, I mean, it's definitely just the way to go. To one last little walk around. I really dig the little hood scoop right here so, too. This thing here is a cam belt cooler. Cam belt cooler? Yes. What? There's, okay, so I'll pop the hood one more time. This is probably the craziest factory hood, I think, on any car. I mean, the Evos, yeah, you've got the big vent for the turbo and the turbo manifold, but you've got the little scoop there, scoop on that side. That's where it goes through, and it seals into here, and it cools the pants. Wow. Very cool. Yeah, I didn't know, I didn't really know what it was for. I was like, maybe a little bit of extra engine cooling. Even the, the engine uh, bay. alternator has its own induction. <laughs> Jeez, man. <laughs> This thing is a true WRC car from the yeah. factory. So I'm just saying that if you guys are looking for a GT4, I'd go with a 94, a WRC edition. I tried to get one, but every time one popped up, I got beat to it, and then I got this for a good price. Yeah, definitely got this for a steal. I don't know if you want to disclose it. I'm sure a lot of people are out there wondering, how much, how much, how much? All right, so I found this on Gunet. It was listed for 6,000. And if you uh, want someone to basically do all the paperwork for you, it can go through a middleman. And it ended up costing me uh, another thousand dollars on top of that. But for seven thousand I got a ship here. And then you know we have to go through the whole JCI process. But that JCI is that two-year inspection. If you want your car to be road legal, it's gotta be in compliance with Japanese law. And sometimes they're not cheap depending on exactly what needs to be done, but it's a massive inspection checklist. That's why most of the cars here in Japan, even the beaters are in good shape and they're all roadworthy. You don't see like crazy rust buckets with parts falling off because they can't pass that JCI and uh, yeah. you know it's just how it goes out here. But even this front bumper, it's, uh, it's pretty rad. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely screams 90s. So yeah, it's got those fogs too, but they're I feel like they're just the right size. It's pretty. What are you, what are you trying to say? <laughs> what are you trying to say about big fogs? I, 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 lo I love the Evo for it. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing this car is missing. The only, only thing that would make this car a little bit cooler, sunroof. Do they make a factory option sunroof on these cars? Uh, yes, they do actually. They do. But my, I have horrible experiences with sunroofs, so I prefer to just have a slick, you know. And a nice slick top, but you guys know me. I love my sunroof. But that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. Definitely go check this out. Do you have an Instagram or anything for your uh, car? Not yet. Not yet? Not yet. If he gets one, I'll update this video. Uh, but as always, thanks for watching. Comment below. Let me know what you guys think about this ST205. Later.